first of all, when we're talking about nutritives, that means we got to talk a little bit about diet and food and digestion. And I think, generally speaking, the modern human diet in the West tends to be very deficient. And I'm speaking about that essentially universally, regardless of what kind of diet you eat. Yes, that even means if you're eating the most organic diet, the cleanest, best possible food, it's quite likely uh, it's still deficient. And this is because of the way in what in which industrialized agriculture impacts the nutritional status of food. Well, actually, the way industrial agriculture impacts the nutritional status of the soil, which then impacts the nutritional status of the food, which then impacts the nutritional status of the people that eat that food. Um, and I don't think this was by any means intentional. I think this just happens to be the result of farming practices going on a massive industrial scale as humans moved out of rural areas as cities got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, the whole concept of the the family farm and homesteading and things like that be, has in a way become a, a thing of the past, though I would say there is a, a, a nice modern resurgence of homesteading, um, which, you know, we like to think we're a part of. Um, we grow a lot of our own food. We raise all of our own meat uh, here on our homestead. And um, and that's good. But uh, the point being that a lot of the ways that farming is practiced with, you know, from monoculture to uh, not crop rotating, lack of biodiversity in farming situations, lack of rotation uh, in grazing of animals, just huge concentrations. Like I think a lack of biodiversity is one of the big things that comes down to it. And then of course we have um, the use of chemicals in uh, agriculture whereby it was the biodiversity that would be part of pest management. Uh, crop rotation would ensure nitrogen is being constantly fixed into the soil. Animals are integrated into uh, vegetable food growing landscapes, whereby there's manure and compost and nutrition being added back into the soil, like the circle being completed, right? It's like we can take and take and take from the earth only so much until we have to incorporate into the model of putting something back into the earth, which is really what, you know, a lot of the animals provide, um, what biodiversity provides, uh, composting and things like that. So point being that because of the way in which much food, most food is grown, it tends to be deficient. And this is an important thing to consider because, Nutrition is at the foundation of our health. Our body functions not just based on the, you know, the, the big three, the way I think of nutrients, the big three being, you know, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, but there's also this massive spectrum of vitamins and minerals and trace elements. Um, and that latter one, trace elements, those are the things that your body needs that has to get exogenously, meaning, you know, externally from food or these days supplementation is common. Um, you only need little tiny amounts of it. Right? Your body doesn't need that much boron or copper or um, selenium, right? Doesn't really need a lot of it to function properly, but there are very specific biochemical pathways that require those nutrients in order to function properly. And if you don't have those nutrients, those biochemical processes in your body will not function properly. And in many instances, they can cause problems. Uh, they can, they can generate health problems. And I mentioned this in, uh, I believe in the tonics uh, video that I pre did previously, uh, but I'll mention it again here because it's really relevant. 
And I also think it's a genius analogy. Um, and this, this one comes from Paul Bergner, uh, one of my teachers in herbal medicine, uh, but also in, you know, I would say natural philosophy. And um, I like his nutritional approach too. But he says these different trace elements or nutrients are like the letters of, of the alphabet. And our biochemical pathways of our body are like a language uh, that are built from those letters, those, those nutrients. And if you're missing, you know, say the Z in the alphabet, like you could still, you know, it's like not that big of a deal. Uh, you could still kind of speak English. But if you suddenly strip away the A, the E, the O, the S, uh, <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, huh, a little bit hard to write or speak the English language if you're missing, you know, three of the main vowels of the entire language. The same is true from a nutritional perspective in the body. Uh, your biochemical processes can't communicate. They can't do their job effectively. And that can lead to a lot of complications. Sometimes uh, phys physical health problems not all the time, but sometimes they can remedy just by becoming replete in baseline nutrition. Um, a really great modern example of this is magnesium deficiency. This is a, probably one of the most common nutrient deficiencies in the modern world. Again, this is because the like there's literally barely any magnesium in the food supply anymore. Um, so a very large majority of uh, humans are, are deficient in magnesium and that's magnesium is doing all kinds of stuff in the body, right? It has to do with um, the relaxation of muscles and the neuromuscular junction. So magnesium deficient people tend to be a little more spas spasmodic. Um, women can have more intense menstrual cramps. Um, the muscle muscular system just tends to be more tense, tight. Um, the nervous system tends to be more anxious, difficulty sleeping, a little more wound up, right? Magnesium kind of has a little bit of a calming effect on the nervous system. It's a, it's a key uh, cofactor in the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle, which manufactures ATP, cellular energy. So if you're deficient in magnesium, oftentimes you'll be pretty fatigued. Uh, so there's lots of things that magnesium is contributing to. Um, if you've got muscle cramps and muscle tightness and tension and spasm, it doesn't matter how many antispasmodic herbs you take, black cohosh and wild yam and lobelia and cramp bark, uh, doesn't really matter how many of those herbs you take. If you're deficient in magnesium, the only way to get those muscles to really relax, like to get to the root cause of the problem, you gotta become replete in magnesium. Uh, so this is why I like to make the case for nutritive tonic herbs. I think this is a really important category of herbs. Um, and many of these plants tend to uptake trace elements, minerals that many of our foods do not provide. It's providing them in organic form, meaning not like not sprayed with pesticides organic, but organic like it's coming from a plant in nature, you know, as opposed to USP synthesized vitamins that are, you know, laboratory synthetics, um, which I think, you know, I, I used to be really pretty gung ho about, oh, you know, you, we, I was really anti-vitamins, you know, really anti-supplements. We should be able to get everything from our food um, because it's more natural that way, obviously. Uh, but I've kind of, had to change my perspective on that, uh, especially considering the state of food these days. So I do think supplementation can be very helpful for a lot of people. 